Shalom, we are continuing now with Psalm 77. And before I read the psalm, let me say that I am recording this in the middle of July. And instead of getting better, the pandemic of COVID-19 is getting worse in many parts of our country and other parts of the world. Whereas several months ago, when we were on the threshold of this pandemic, we had hoped that by the summer it would be much better, but obviously this is not the case. So it is easy to fall into a sense of depression and deep frustration about what is going on. The psalm actually is able to teach us about how we can work through that and through the powers of positive self-talk, work through despair and depression into a much better attitude of hope and of faith. As I read the psalm, pay close attention to the signs and symbols, uh, symptoms rather, of depression that he describes in the psalm, and also pay attention to how he moves from the depression into an entirely different attitude. For the leader on Yidutun of Asaf, a psalm, I cry aloud to God, I cry to God that he may give ear to me. In my time of distress, I turn to the Lord with my hand uplifted. My eyes flow all night without respite. I will not be comforted. I call God to mind. I moan. I complain. My spirit fails. Selah. You have held my eyelids open. I am overwrought. I cannot speak. My thoughts turn to days of old, to years long past. I recall at night their jibes at me. I commune with myself. My spirit inquires, will the Lord reject forever and never again show favor? Has his faithfulness disappeared forever? Will his promise be unfulfilled for all time? Has God forgotten how to pity? Has he in anger stifled his compassion? Selah. And I said, it is my fault that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I recall the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I recall your wonders of old. I recount all your works. I speak of your acts. O God, your ways are holiness. What God is as great as God? You are the God who works wonders. You have manifested your strength among the peoples. By your arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were convulsed. The very deep quaked as well. Clouds streamed water. The heavens rumbled. Your arrows flew about. Your thunder rumbled like wheels. Lightning lit up the world. The earth quaked and trembled. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters. Your tracks could not be seen. You led your people like a flock in the care of Moses and Aaron. Let's take a look at the signs of depression that the psalmist describes. First, he talks about crying aloud to God. He is distressed. His tears flow all night. His tears seem to be endless. Without respite, he will not be comforted. In other words, he is experiencing hopelessness. And he says, I call God to mind. I moan. I might add to that, I call God to mind, but I moan. Even when I think of God, he says, I still moan. God should be a source of hope to him, a source of joy and of faith, or the prospect of joy at least, and of deliverance. But instead, when he thinks of God, he moans. He complains. His spirit fails. He says, God, you have held my eyelids open. What does that mean? It means that he is experiencing sleeplessness. He ruminates throughout the night. He has racing thoughts. And like many who experience depression, he has a drastic change in his sleep habits, either too little sleep or too much sleep. The hopelessness and despair take over. He says, has God's faithfulness disappeared forever? Will his promise be unfulfilled for all time? And then to cap it off, he says, it is my fault that the right hand of the Most High has changed. That is, 
he turns his anger and frustration inward. Like so many who undergo depression, he turns his anger inward against himself. Depression often is just that, anger turned inward. But he doesn't allow himself to stay in that place. Now, the psalmist does not enjoy the benefit of psychotropic medications like Prozac or Zoloft or Lexapro, the antidepressant medications that can be so effective for so many. He's got to do it himself. How does he do it? Well, the clue is found in a Hebrew word, the Hebrew root, sin yud chet, siach. That root is used three times in this psalm. First, in verse 4, he says, Asicha fititatev ruchi sela. I complain, my spirit fails. The Hebrew word siach there is used to mean complaint. But that same word can also mean converse, commune with oneself, have dialogue, or speak. And so in the next context, in verse 7, he says, I commune with myself. That is, I start to think to myself and talk to myself about how I might be able to emerge from this depressed state. And now we have the third instance of that Hebrew word siach, when he says, I recall the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I recall your wonders of old. I recount all your works. Uva ali lo techa asicha. I speak asicha, siach, of your acts. So now the psalmist reminds himself, he uses the power of thought and memory to remind himself of God's miraculous and wondrous deeds that God was able to do in order to deliver the people Israel throughout the past. And by thinking of that, the psalmist essentially is saying to himself, as bad as things are for me now, I know that in the past, God has stepped in to rescue God's people, to make things better, to lift his people from the darkness of despair into the light of deliverance. And so by reminding himself that he is not alone, that he is part of a series of generations of people who have experienced God's salvation, now he's able to move from depression into faith. And so too, we in our generation, remember that we are not alone, that we are part of a generation of millions of people who are experiencing this pandemic together. And we also remind ourselves that we can draw strength from one another. We can support one another through this. And we can, by grasping one another's hands, not physically, but emotionally and spiritually, move forward in a positive way. And we also remind ourselves that we, in our generation, are the latest in many generations of past history who have undergone terrible catastrophes but have found the means to survive and to move forward into better days. So many of those in previous generations relied on their faith in God. They believed in the power and hope of God's deliverance. So many in our generation are secular and may have never had, or if they did have, lost their faith in God. And it is true that very often we feel 
as if we live in a godless world. But we need to call to mind the fact that people in the past who have had it worse than we do today found and managed to found ways and managed to survive and to move forward. They found ways to move from the despair and hopelessness and depression of the darkness they experienced into the light of a better day. They used their power of faith and of thinking to move in positive directions. And we can do the same thing through our power of thought, our power of faith, and the strength that we derive from the energy and power of God's presence. Thank you.